For ancient Stoic philosophers, you should know Stoicism is a very old philosophy that's been around for a long time. It has affected many people and made them think differently. Some very smart philosophers from the past helped make Stoicism what it is today. We can say that four of them had the biggest influence. It started in Greece a long time ago and then became popular in the Roman Empire and other places. Here are the four most famous Stoic philosophers from history. Number four, Marcus Aurelius. Marcus Annius Verus came from a well-known family, but nobody back then thought he'd become the emperor of the Roman Empire. We don't know much about his childhood, but he was a serious young man who liked sports like wrestling, boxing, and hunting. When he was a teenager, the current emperor Hadrian was getting old and didn't have a child to take over. He first picked Lucius Caeonius, but when Lucius died unexpectedly, he chose Antoninus. Antoninus had to adopt Marcus as his son as well as Lucius Verus, the son of Caeonius. This is when Marcus became Marcus Aurelius Antoninus. When Hadrian died, Marcus became the emperor. He ruled for about two decades until his death in 180. At first, he ruled alongside his adopted brother Lucius Verus. His reign was challenging, with wars, threats from barbarian tribes, the Rise of Christianity, and a deadly plague. Marcus died in 180 in his military headquarters in what is now Vienna. He had a difficult relationship with his son, Commodus, who he had made co-emperor. Despite the challenges he faced, many admired him for his wisdom and virtue. Marcus held one of the most powerful positions in the world at the time. He could do almost anything he wanted, but he didn't abuse his power. He was a rare leader who showed wisdom and virtue unlike many others in history. He left behind a diary known as Meditations where he gave himself advice on how to be virtuous, just and wise. This document is unique and has inspired many people throughout his story. We are fortunate to have access to Meditations because it was lost for centuries and later rediscovered in a letter from a scholar named Arethas in the 10th century. If you want to read more about Marcus, check out Gregory Hayes' translation of Meditations. You can also explore works like The Inner Citadel and Philosophy as a Way of Life by Pierre Hadot. If you're interested in Stoicism, The Obstacle is the Way is another book to consider. Marcus practiced Stoicism, which helped him deal with the challenges of leading a vast empire. He learned Stoicism from his mentors and teachers, including Rusticus and Epictetus, Heraclitus also influenced his thinking. Although he likely didn't have access to Seneca's works, he embraced Stoic principles. One sad thing is that the philosophy of self-restraint, duty, and respect for others that Marcus followed was not upheld by the emperors who succeeded him. Now, it's up to us to embrace and live by these principles. In meditations, Marcus offered advice to himself on self-discipline, personal ethics, humility, self-actualization, and strength. This text has been inspirational to many, from writers like Ambrose Bierce and Robert Louis Stevenson, to statesmen like Theodore Roosevelt, Wen Jiabao, and Bill Clinton. Three stoic exercises we can learn from Marcus. Firstly, practice the virtues you can display, like honesty, gravity, endurance, austerity, and patience. Focus on your strengths instead of dwelling on your weaknesses, Moreover, find strength in people around you or role models who inspire you. Draw encouragement from their virtues. And lastly, focus on the present and avoid getting overwhelmed by imagining all the way things can go wrong. Deal with the situation at hand and ask yourself why it's so unbearable. Number three, Zeno Zeno of Citium, a man born on the island of Cyprus in the third century BCE, is often recognized as the founding father of Stoicism. He began studying philosophy from a young age and was greatly influenced by the teachings of Socrates. Eventually, he made his way to Athens where he started teaching and established what we now know as the Stoic school. Zeno, as a philosopher, stressed the importance of rationality, self-control, and virtue. He believed that by practicing these virtues, people could attain inner peace and tranquility. Zeno's teachings attracted a diverse group of followers, including merchants, politicians, 
and even slaves. His ideas laid the groundwork for the development of Stoic philosophy, which had a lasting impact on Western thought. After Zeno's passing, the Stoic school continued under the guidance of notable philosophers such as Cleanthes, Chrysippus, and Diogenes of Babylon. These thinkers expanded upon Zeno's ideas, forming a more comprehensive philosophical system that emphasized living in harmony with nature and accepting one's fate. A central tenet of Stoicism is the idea that individuals should concentrate on what they can control and accept what is beyond their control. This philosophy is captured in the well-known Stoic saying, man is not disturbed by things, but by the views he takes of them. Stoics believe that by focusing on their thoughts and attitudes, they could find inner peace even in the face of external challenges. Zeno initially conducted his teaching at the Stoa Poikile, which stood in the ancient Agora of Athens. This is the famous porch that gave Stoicism its name, a term you may have encountered briefly in high school or college philosophy classes. Initially, his followers were called Zenonians, but later they became known as Stoics. Regrettably, none of Zeno's writings have survived, and our best information about him comes from Diogenes Laertius, a biographer of Greek philosophers, and his work lives and opinions of eminent philosophers. This lack of written material also applies to the other prominent Stoic thinkers who contributed to the foundation of Stoicism. We do not have complete preserved works from Cleanthes or Chrysippus. Nonetheless, we are aware that Zeno wrote a work called Republic, which directly opposed Plato's book with the same title. In Republic, Zeno outlined his vision of an ideal society based on egalitarian principles. As Plutarch described it, the aim of Republic was to create a society where everyone would be considered fellow country folk and citizens living under the same laws and principles, like a flock sharing a common pasture. While Stoicism has evolved since Zeno's time, its core message remains consistent. As he expressed it, happiness is a good flow of life. The path to achieving this happiness is through peace of mind, which results from living a virtuous life in accordance with reason and nature. Stoicism's enduring influence on Western thought is a testament to the enduring wisdom of Zeno's teachings and the subsequent development of this philosophical tradition. If you're liking these philosophers, be sure to subscribe to Stoic Legion and tap that notification bell for the latest Stoic insights and updates. Number two, Seneca. Seneca, an ancient philosopher, grappled with the issue of wealth and riches, which makes his life particularly fascinating. He was born in southern Spain more than 2,000 years ago and received his education in Rome. His father, Seneca the Elder, was a well-known Roman writer, and later in his life, Seneca became the uncle of the poet Lucan. Seneca initially pursued a career in politics and eventually became a high-ranking financial clerk. During this time, he wrote tragedies and his work, Consolation to Marcia, which is part of his writings on consolation. In 41 AD, Seneca's life took a drastic turn when he was exiled to the island of Corsica on allegations of having an affair with Julia Livilla, the emperor's niece and Caligula's sister. During his exile, he wrote a letter to his mother to console her during his absence. Eight years later, he was allowed to return to Rome and became the tutor and advisor to Nero, the future emperor. Nero later became one of the most notorious and tyrannical emperors in Roman history, raising questions about Seneca's character. Notably, Seneca's wealth mainly came from his service to Nero, and his life ended tragically in 65 AD when Nero ordered his execution, suspecting him of being part of a plot against him. Throughout these turbulent periods, Stoicism remained a constant in Seneca's life. He was introduced to this philosophy by Attalus, a Stoic philosopher who was his early teacher. Seneca also admired Cato, whose name appeared frequently in his writings, However, Seneca did not confine himself to Stoicism alone. He drew inspiration from other philosophical schools, even citing Epicurus in some instances. After his death, Seneca continued to influence notable figures, including Erasmus, Francis Bacon, Pascal, Montaigne, and modern figures like Nassim Taleb and Tim Ferriss, who have shown a renewed interest in his works. 
Seneca's enduring appeal stems from his ability to not only write about philosophy, but also apply it to navigate the ups and downs of life, which he experienced firsthand. His life, filled with wealth, exile, and the challenge of counseling a tyrant, offers valuable lessons for everyone. Number 1. Epictetus Epictetus, who lived nearly 2,000 years ago in Hierapolis, now known as Pamukkale in Turkey, was born into slavery within a wealthy household owned by a man named Epaphroditus. Surprisingly, Epaphroditus granted Epictetus permission to pursue an education, particularly in the field of philosophy. It was during this time that Epictetus discovered philosophy through his teacher and mentor, the Stoic philosopher Musonius Rufus. After Emperor Nero's death, Epictetus gained his freedom and dedicated himself to teaching philosophy in Rome for about 25 years. However, his teaching career came to an abrupt halt when Emperor Domitian banished all philosophers from the city. In response, Epictetus fled to Nicopolis, Greece, where he established a philosophy school and continued teaching until his passing. Epictetus's profound influence can be seen in various contexts. Marcus Aurelius, in his work Meditations, expressed gratitude to his teacher Junius Rusticus for introducing him to Epictetus's teachings. James Stockdale, a prisoner of war in Vietnam for over seven years, credited Epictetus for providing him with the mental framework to endure torture. Even Tom Wolfe's novel A Man in Full prominently features Epictetus. Albert Ellis, the founder of cognitive behavioral therapy, was also influenced by Epictetus. What's intriguing is that Epictetus never wrote anything himself. It is through his student Arian that we have written accounts of his lessons. From emperors to war heroes, many have found guidance, solace, and strength in Epictetus's teachings. The impact of his philosophy extends to all who choose to embrace it. For those interested in delving into his philosophy, a good starting point is Epictetus's Enchiridion, a concise handbook filled with Stoic maxims and principles. It provides an excellent introduction to his teachings. If you find it somewhat challenging, you might begin with the works of Seneca and Marcus Aurelius. To delve deeper, you can explore Epictetus's discourses, which offer more extensive insights. There are many essential lessons we can draw from Epictetus. First, remember what's within your control. Differentiating between what you can and cannot control is a fundamental aspect of Stoic philosophy. It encourages us to focus on our own actions and reactions, rather than getting upset over external events or the actions of others. Second, set the standard by living it. Actions speak louder than words. Like great leaders, we should exemplify the principles we believe in, rather than just talking about them. Finally, prescribe yourself a character. Recognize the power of habits and consciously set principles and standards for yourself. With small daily steps, you can move closer to becoming the person you wish to be. So, these four ancient Stoic philosophers, Marcus Aurelius, Zeno, Seneca, and Epictetus, have left an indelible mark on the way we approach life's challenges. Their wisdom, resilience, and timeless teachings continue to inspire and guide us today. If you found this video enlightening, don't forget to hit that subscribe button to stay tuned for more intriguing explorations of history and philosophy,